support and lift one another up. And in doing so, Paul then says, rejoice evermore. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I don't have time for folks with no joy.
she was saying to the cup, oh cup, how beautiful you are. Yeah. And one night she fell asleep and she had a dream. And she dreamed that that beautiful cup was talking back to her. Yeah. And the cup said, I don't mind you telling me how beautiful I am. You see, but you do not understand where I come from.
for store with distractions all around. I try to lift my hands to give you praise, but then the spirit of heaviness tries to shield your face. So I'm singing, breathe into me, O oh Lord. Oh, man.
God for this moment. I thank God for this pastor, the under shepherd angel of this house, the Reverend William Lane. My colleague in the field and my brother in the ministry, I thank God for the invitation. I do thank God for the leading lady of this great church. God bless you, Sister Lane. Thank God for Pastor Mary's group and also his lovely wife, First Lady Group. I thank God for my mentor, yeah. my father in the ministry being with us today, Reverend Dr. Henry G. Baker. God bless you, Pastor. Amen, amen. Thank God for my big brother in the ministry, Pastor Wanya Jones. Amen. 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 God bless you. And also thank God for Lebanon Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Church which God has called me to pastor, proud pastor of. Thank God for the following pastor on today. Amen. And I thank God that he'll follow me whenever I need him to follow me. Amen. 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 I thank God for this great church, Mount Sinai Mission. Mount Sinai Baptist Church. Amen. Lovely members, the officers, deacons, trustees, the food prepared service. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have to talk to y'all after service because if everybody falls asleep on this, it's because of the food, not me. Amen. 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 If I missed any one charge to my head and knock my heart, but I'm here with a word today. I'm on assignment and God has a word for each and every one of us. Amen. The text was read, and you're here in Matthew, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 20. Let us read it again. You may you remain seated. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and a younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my good that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in war. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the parts that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's high servant have bread enough to spare, and not perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your high servants. And he arose and came to his father. Yeah. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him make compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be yeah. to God. Amen. Yeah. On this homecoming, today, I'm going to lift up for a subject. It's time to come home. Right. Amen. Amen. It's right. time to come home. This text reminds me of a story that other young person ought to read by Lorraine Hansberry, A Raisin in the Sun. Yes. You know the story, you know A Raisin in the Sun is about an African-American family in the city of Chicago. They were there in the projects and the father died. The father left enough money for them to purchase a wonderful house out in the suburbs of Chicago. There was a son by the name of Walter Lee who was left in charge of the inheritance. And Walter Lee made a critical and bad decision. He let someone convince him to invest in what he thought was a quick investment. And in the midst of that quick investment, and if you read the book, you know he lost all of the money. And in losing all the money, he lost the potential for them to buy the suburban house and get out of the projects. His younger sister was upset with him for his dumb choice that he made. She looked at him and began to rile him and ridicule him. She began to call him silly, and he was an embarrassment to the family. And she said to him that you no longer qualify to be my brother. I hate you. The book goes on to say that the mother heard the end of the story. So she walks in and interrupts this tense moment between brother and sister and said to mother, said to the daughter, daughter Walter Lee has messed up. He's done a crazy thing. He's done something that shames us and makes us feel bad. But with all that he's done, never forget there's always something left to love. Can I talk to you? Now that's a word for somebody here this afternoon. That's a word for someone who's given up on their child. That's a word for someone who's given up on someone in your family that no matter what they've done, there's always something left to love. Now all of us might as well be up and shout today because the reality is that all of us have done something. 
thing. It should have caused people to kick us to the curb. It should have caused God to kick us to the curb. But I dare to look at somebody and say, I'm glad God sees in me something worth loving. You ought to testify to somebody and say, I made some messed up. I made some bad choices. I've done some bad things. But Jesus Christ stands in the statement that even in my worst thing, there's always something left in me worth loving. You are a good Chapter. It's a story, a trilogy of lostness. We have the lost sheep, which represents property. We have the lost coin, which represents money. The lost sheep, which represents property, is lost because of foolishness. The lost coin, which represents money, is lost because of carelessness. But then we have the lost son, which represents human life. And while the sheep is lost because of foolishness and the coin is lost because of carelessness, the son is lost because of willfulness. Right. Are you listening to me? Oh, he makes a willful choice and winds up in a pig pen. He thought he wanted his money early because he thought he liked what money can give him. But he learned that every choice that looks good to him ain't necessarily good. For him. See, that's why we love you. You never make a lifetime decision that's based on a temporary emotion. Don't make up in your feelings, make you get a, make a choice yeah. that'll last a lifetime. But the text goes on to say that the boy comes to himself after he's lost everything, and he said, "I will rise and go to my father." Uh -huh. And I like that we miss it. He has nothing left. Nothing. He's lost all his money. Oh. He's lost his dignity. Yeah. But he comes yeah. to himself. Yeah. He has nothing of material, but he found yeah. himself. Yeah. Let me come and get you y'all kind of slow this down. The text lets me know that if I can find me, that's more than enough to have me rejoice if I have nothing else. Because of what it suggests today is having stuff does not make us. And when you relegate your value to the stuff that you have, you undervalue who you really are. But if you ever learn who you are in God, you'll stop reaching for stuff and start moving to heaven.
No! 